Hello everyone, welcome back. This is my second video on the Toaru Law. So this is the history of a certain magical index within its universe and timeline. And if you haven't watched the first video on the, the Toaru Law, I recommend watching that video first. I'll link it in the description. And then once you finish watching that, you can come back here and continue with the video. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for the positive reception I got on the previous video. Um, it's motivated me to make more content and I'm glad you all enjoyed it. And also, I will be discussing some spoilers concerning Alistair, Toma and Imagine Breaker and Academy City. So if you don't want to be spoiled, then I recommend um, not watching the rest of this, this video. Anyway, we'll kickstart where we left off. So I briefly discussed the Aeon of Osiris, which was the, dom the, the dominance of uh, Christianity. So after Jesus, you have um, the formation of the Roman Catholic Church, which becomes the largest church in the Toaru universe. It has like two million uh, followers at the time of the main story. Um, and later you have the Russian Orthodox Church and the Anglican Church, which was formed by Henry VIII in the 16th century, split away from the Catholics. And these churches are obviously run by magicians. So Europe as a whole has been very dominated by um, the magic side. This is what becomes, you know, the modern magic side as we know it, as the, the pagan the pagan faith is pretty much diminished by now. I mean, you have Gremlin, which comes on later on, and you do have some uh, pagan magicians that appear every now and then. But it's mainly the um, the Christians at the forefront of the magic side. Anyway, so the science side, since the pure world, has been, <laughs> I mean, it's completely lost its power. The science side pretty much doesn't exist at this point. You only have like the gemstones around, which are the natural espers. But the science side only comes into fruition in the 20th century. But before that, we've got to talk about the magic kebbles, which are like independent magic groups. And in the 19th century, one prominent cabal comes into existence, which is called the Golden Dawn. And the Golden Dawn uses like a fusion of different uh, magic systems and beliefs, since magic... It has many styles to it, as I've already mentioned, like there's Christian magic, there's ancient Egyptian magic, um, Norse magic, you know, there's all sorts. And the Golden Dawn, like, uses quite a lot of elements from um, different beliefs, as I've mentioned. And a prominent, well, he's not prominent yet, but he will become the, the most prominent magician in history, Alistair Crowley joins the Golden Dawn and Alistair is a bit of a, a visionary in that he's the great well he becomes the greatest magician uh, through his hard work and um, if you know about what happens to Alistair he basically betrays the Golden Dawn I'm not going to go into the details of why he does this because that would take a while to explain uh, but he betrays the Golden Dawn uh, he pretty much kills off the, all the Golden Dawn members and from this he decides that he's going to um, pursue science rather than magic. He, he vows himself to destroy magic, even though he is a magician himself. Um, so he comes into contact with Iwas uh, after this in Egypt and this pretty much gives him a revelation and that's how he's pretty much introduced to um, the science side so his goal pretty much becomes to try and manifest Iwas into uh, the physical world and um, he also comes into contact with Imagine Breaker um, during the Golden Dawn but it leaves him uh, but he certainly sees its potential since at, at that moment in time Imagine Breaker was a spiritual tool meant to um, destroy immortality and basically any supernatural ability 
and this will become a cornerstone of uh, Alistair's plan. Alistair also has the chance to become a magic god, but he refuses because he values his humanity above all else. He does not want to be immortal. Um, he also hates the magic gods because they... I mean, if I, I'll try and explain briefly why. Um, it's because the phases, which I mentioned earlier in the previous video, the many universes, um, the amount of phases you you create and the, how strong magic is determines um, predetermines events in the universe. I know that's quite... Uh, I'm not really explaining that very well, but um, basically the more magic there is, the more events uh, are predetermined to happen and it won't, ha won't ha happen naturally like with uh, a scientific world. Um, so all these phases produce sparks and these sparks um, pretty much cause fated events and Alistair thinks that's unfair because um, his daughter was, her death was uh, premature and um, as a result of the phases. So he wants to make a fair world by re-establishing the pure world itself. So back to how it was at the very beginning with I was um, and no magic at all. So Alistair, he starts <laughs> experimenting on children, um, trying to make them produce AIM, which he does that in uh, Sicily. I think it was the Temple of Philema in the 1920s. Uh, in real life, it was pretty fucked up um, place. Uh, if, you, if you're curious about it, I recommend researching it, but it's not a very nice place. But in the Torah universe, he experiments on children, children with drugs um, in order to help them produce, you know, AIM, as I said, and Esper powers. Um, eventually, he's kicked off the island by Mussolini. And then... He returns to England and he's basically hunted in the 1940s um, by magicians who want to kill him because Alistair is a very controversial character at this moment in time. He doesn't have many fans at all in England. People think he's a bit of a, um, a heretic, a traitor. To the magic side especially because he's... He is basically a science advocate and wants nothing more than to destroy magic itself. Um, so, technically he dies in 1947. Well, except he doesn't because he fakes his own death. Except, um, I think he was injured uh, or he faked his injury, I don't know. But he's found by none other than the frog-faced doctor, Heaven Cancellor. Yes, Heaven Cancellor was in England at the time, and he finds Alistair, and Heaven Cancellor saves Alistair's life. And the two of them make a deal that um, they won't reveal that Alistair's still alive, and that they will go to Japan to create Academy City. And Alistair does this by using the Arctic controller, which can influence, like, concepts in the brain and he can do this to a large group of people so he basically mind um mind controls people subconsciously into thinking like academy city is a good idea and that we should be making espers so he gets um i mean alistair was pretty wealthy apparently um it's mabbers uh, his his former teacher who was quite poor so alistair somehow managed manages to buy a portion of tokyo and um, makes it an independent state, and then borders it off um, in, the 19, in the late 1940s, and this is when Academy City is officially formed. And um, Academy City is essentially based off of the Temple of Philema because he is doing experiments on kids to produce AIM, and his ultimate goal is to some, like manifest Iwas to destroy magic. Um, also, you have the first Esper, the beginning child, which was mentioned in one of the side stories recently. Um, she was the first Esper, but then Alistair sees her as too out of control because her power just is a bit crazy. Like he, it's, 
it's too insane for him because <laughs> uh, you, you can't really turn it off her power like his, her power is always on so he decides it's best to um, to shut it away just in case he might need her in the future for one of his plans yes Alistair plans a lot he makes plans and then sub plans he's always planning in case his main plans fail and why did he form Academy City what's the point it's because of Toma Yes, fast forward um, just before like the main series, um, Terma is born and we find out that Academy City was actually created to in well attract Terma or the, or the Terma that would eventually be born, uh, the person who has a magic breaker uh, to the city and this was planned by Alistair as Imagine Breaker disappeared after Alistair destroyed the Golden Dawn. Um, so he made a city of Esper powers to eventually have uh, Imagine Breaker reveal itself to him, and it finally does um, decades later. And this period where um, Academy City is around is called the Aeon of Horus, or, well, not quite, because um, Christianity itself hasn't been destroyed yet, but uh, Alistair definitely believes they are in that current age. Um, so the Aeon of Horus is where humanity gains enlightenment and doesn't need religion anymore. And as a result, Christianity is basically falls apart and is destroyed. Uh, that's what he predicted. And yeah, this is from like the, the emergence of the science side or the modern science side. So now you have two distinct sides uh, in the world, the magic side, which is most uh, of Europe and uh, elsewhere, and the science side, which is basically just Academy City and its institutions, because Academy City gets a lot of institutions across the world um, that support the city and uh, do have some of its technology, but not all of it. And uh, Imagine Breaker is also necessary for um, the imaginary school district and for summoning Iwas and of course the Mystica Network um, is very important for Iwas and um, they get transported to different institutions across the world. And before the start of the main series, you have, um, I mean, the magic and science side agree a peace treaty not to intervene with each other's affairs. But as Terma is invited to the main, you know, Academy City, this starts to change as Alistair and the Roman Catholics kind of start pushing towards a war. And you have the Anglican Church who want to do Index's annual memory wipe. And they think the best place to do this is in Academy City as Academy City is closed off from the rest of the world and it's a city of science. There are no magicians there, as they know. Um, so they ask Alistair if they can host a memory wipe there and Alistair agrees. And that's what basically starts the main series, um, Sir Magical Index. Um, they do not know, however, that Alistair is in fact Alistair Crowley, the legendary magician. This is because Alistair's tube, which he is now in, which extends his life by about 1,800 years, I think it is, that also hides his identity, so they can't tell it's actually Alistair. They just think Alice is like a code name which he goes by. Um, the only people that know that, or or predict, or <laughs> have an intuition about it is uh, Motoharu and Lola, from the Ang Anglican Church, uh, but the rest uh, don't really know or have any idea. So yeah, I think I covered everything in this video. I hope you enjoyed, found it informative, like the last one. I'll definitely upload more content here in the future. Stay tuned for that. Subscribe, turn notifications on, all that good stuff. And I'll see you around.